When I think of the most iconic video game characters, I think of characters like the Mario Brothers, Pac-Man, Ryu, and the subject for today's video, Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog has been around since 1991 with his debut game of the same name and is still going strong with plenty of video games as well as exploring into other mediums like films, comics and many, many merchandises. Why is that? What makes Sonic stand out compared to other platformer mascots like Gex, Arrow the Acrobat and Cool Spot? Why is he and his franchise well loved and what do I love about him? Today, I would hopefully be answering these questions. Let's start out right back to the beginning with the character's creation. Before Sega was a third party development company, they were considered rivals to Nintendo, making their own consoles such as the Master System, which during the 80s were doing pretty well in places like Japan, Europe and with the Yeti still popping out Master System titles way after other territories discontinued them. However, in the USA, Sega had a tough competition against the Nintendo Entertainment System, which I guess one of the reasons besides the press of 1983 in the USA is not having an iconic mascot yet Mario. I guess Sega had its kid, but he was nowhere near as iconic or fun as Mario. The company decided to change that during the Mega Drive, no not right at the beginning of the console's life. The Japanese division held a little contest to design their new mascot for their new game. There were plenty of designs, with a few becoming their own, such as Dr. Eggman, who eventually became the series' main antagonist, and an armadillo that became mighty. But in the end, the winner was artist Naoto Osima's drawing on a hedgehog named Mr. Needlemouse, which eventually became Sonic the Hedgehog. Hedgehogs are known to curl up into a ball, which is a dead blueprint for a high-speed platformer, where for a majority of the original was just doing that. It's simple, yet effective. The first Sonic game became a massive hit for Sega that they became a straight up competitor for Nintendo, at least until the Dreamcast. Even after Sega decided to make games for other consoles, the series was still going strong and I think one of the main reasons for it is the design, the personality and the various cast members. Character designer and artist Asuma originally went to New York. She saw three characters, the first being a hedgehog, the second the Edman design and the third being a dot, to see which one was the most popular with a majority of people pointing at the hedgehog. The key things Asuma wanted to do when designing Sonic was something a majority of people from various races and ages could recognize easy and something children to draw. I remember as a kid I used to draw a lot of Sonic characters and uh, a bit of a confession, I actually made Sonic OCs when I was a kid. He was a porcupine. Characters like Mario and Dodicon were visually appealing too and were games I grew up with even till this day but I remember having a lot of trouble drawing them as a kid. Sonic and his friends were a lot easier to draw. I don't believe I was the only one too. Sonic fan art of various quality is very popular. You don't want stuff on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter and even just type in anything related to the series on Google and you would find tons of fan art, OCs and fan names. So Isima succeeded and then some. What makes them easier to draw compared to some characters? Well, a comparison would be someone like Mickey Mouse, another well-established and iconic character that debuted way back in 1929 who can easily be drawn with a bunch of circles. Sonic has many variations throughout the years, but it can still be drawn with just a bunch of circles and lines. Round shapes and soft lines are normally considered cute, very pleasant, and so is that the character is often friendly, which can be seen in characters like Mickey Mouse and Sonic. But unlike Mickey, Sonic has a couple of sharp edges, mostly seen in his quills, which gives him a cool flair as well as an aggressive attitude, kinda like a Sonin protagonist. Sonic's design then becomes a template for a majority of the cast, rearranging and adding extra parts to become their own. 
While Sonic is more recognizable as a platformer character, his design can be fit into a variety of genres like kart races, party, fighting games, pinball, and so much more thanks to a simplistic round design. That's what makes Mario very pleasing too. It's not just the games, but it can fit into plenty of other mediums like films, OVAs, TV shows, and comics with ease without feeling too jarring. It just makes sense. The Sonic the Hedgehog films are some of the highest grossing and well received video game adaptations, as well as the Yonders running comic book series based on a video game with the artsy comics until 2016 when the series was rebooted by IDW. A good couple of Sonic characters sometimes makes a character recognizable, with Sonic having about four distinct colors white, beige, red, and the primary color blue. The blue can be described as matching the company Zero's colour, but it's also a universal European colour used in many brands and characters as it's considered comforting and cool. In Chinese culture, the colour blue is associated with wood, east, and spring, which shows Sonic's environmentalism and animal friendly side seen in the early days, and in North America, blue often symbolises trust and serenity, which is seen often in games that are yeast, helping out characters like Chip to get his memories back. The red shoes are a distinct part of his design and were inspired by Michael Jackson in the front cover album Bad and the music video Speed Demon as seen in the belt bottles combined with the colour scheme of Santa Claus. Being the opposite side to Blue on the colour wheel is a visually pleasing combination and also shows Sonic's fiery and rebellious passing. The 90s were all about the extreme, the coolness and in your face attitude. Characters at Mario were a bit more friendly in appearance, while Sonic had a more in-your-face attitude, especially in the market side of things. Nintendo was saw more as a family-friendly developer during the 90s, which isn't really true, but Sega wanted to be cooler, radical, and naughty with Sonic, and its many other franchises meant for the bitter kids. Well, at least how the West advertised them. He spawned at the right time, and while a lot of stuff in the 90s were considered uncool now, now, Sonic's design has stood the test of time with his simplicity with only minor tweets every now and then. The Mega Drive titles perfectly show off Sonic's theme of environmentalism. The first game was originally done to be set in a dream world when nightmare creatures would take over. However, it was changed to a mad scientist named Dr. Robotnik who kidnapped animals and turned them into robots as well as searched them for the powerful Chaos Emeralds to fuel his mechanical empire. The reason for the change could possibly be for the rise of the discussion on climate change as well as other environmental issues occurring during the 80s. A bit of a theory, but the chaos emeralds being extremely powerful yet uncontrollable and Dr. Edman trying to obtain and control them could relate to how large corporations use fuel, oil and the other chemicals that cause harm to our planet. This probably wasn't the intention by the developers, but my little observation. The first zone, Green Hill Zone, shows mostly organic life with just waterfalls and trees, but as the game progresses it gradually becomes more artificial until you get to Scrap Rain Zone, becoming completely man-made, filled with pollution. You can see this in Sonic 2 and 3 with levels like Chemical Plant and Angel Island. Sonic CD takes this to another level so in how bad pollution can be through its time traveling feature. When you go into the bad future, you see how Edman completely ruins the landscapes of Little Planet. But if you go back to the past and stop the machines, the future changes full of wildlife and plant life. Or you can get the time stones. The Saturday AM cartoon perfectly captures the Nature vs. Machine story too, with how Dr. Robotnik takes over Mobius, the planet in the cartoon, roboticizing the Yiven habitat. In the cartoon, Sonic is part of a group of freedom fighters that rebel against Robotnik's forces in order to restore the planet to its former glory. Around the 90s, there were many cartoons addressing the issues on the environment and pollution, with examples being Captain Planet and the Batoons. But I think the Saturday AM cartoon is probably the best to discuss it while having cool stuff to keep the children entertained. While certain topics may only be relevant to the time they existed, topics like climate change, technology, and wildlife are still relevant, making the story in the cartoon and the themes of the games also timeless that we can relate to. 
While the themes aren't everywhere in the series, it can still be seen in titles like Kaya's, with the aliens and Eggman using Planet Wiss's resources to make his theme park. These stories display how Sana always stands up for the Yishodai and protects the natural way of life, over Eggman's corporate greed and lack of care for nature. I think this is the reason why some people gravitate towards the character. I know, it's one of the reasons I do. Sonic has always had a sense of positivity that is difficult for him to be swayed, especially in the most daunting times. Sonic himself isn't really a character that grows as a person, and he's not in the games, but acts more as someone who uplifts others. He helps Tip restore his memories, he tries to assist Mayena by telling her to give life to the first, and most importantly, he acts like an older brother to Tails, making characters that Tails grow and become a more confident individual. If you were a younger sibling, you could possibly relate to Tails and see how cool your older brother or sister might be. I know when I was younger, I kinda yet up to my older siblings. Even if you were an only child, you may have thought how cool and confident Sonic was and inspired to mimic their carefree and upbeat attitude. I know from a couple of people and this is the reason why they love the character so much. His strong will as well as his upbeat and fiery personality can be seen in some of the music too, like Yev and Yearn, Open Your Heart, It Doesn't Matter and Yev Life, which for a majority are like power bands, which are normally an uplifting music genre. A lot of the genres used in the series contain stuff like rock, power ballads, Euromits, and house music, which besides being popular music for the period each game was released, it also matches the character's personality. Whenever I hear anything positive about this franchise, music normally pops up. I grew up with the series since the Mega Drive, but I noticed that people who didn't even grow up with Sega consoles grew up with Sonic either from the compilations, or even the more character driven titles like Adventure 2 Battle, Heroes, or even Kaya's back in 2010. I did a vote earlier in the year asking people what generation they got into the series, and while the numbers were small, a lot of them seemed to have jumped in during the 6th generation of consoles, with the 7th generation of consoles getting the silver medal. They might have been drawn into the series from outside the games too, just because of the design and personality of the Blue Hedgehog and his friends. I hear a lot of talks from fans of various ages just talking about the characters, the interactions, and the funny lines from the cartoons. Even the promotional stuff, like the Twitter takeovers, give Sonic and his chums life. What still keeps me playing the series is the gameplay and the speed of the character. The idea for the original Sonic game was to give you a sense of speed, which was held by Yuji Naka's programming and Hirokazu Yasuhara's directing and multi yelled level design. Yuji Naka apparently wanted to make a game engine that focuses on speed and one of the ideas for Sonic was him replaying World 1-1 in Super Mario Bros. and seeing how fast he can beat it which has resulted in the dopamine, seeing how fast I can beat the stages, and the thrill of replaying the games. It's not in all the Sonic games, but even the Sega AD games, like Rust, Unyeast, Generations, and Mania borrow the core essence of the Mega Drive titles. It's always refreshing to come back to a lot of these titles, and always discovering something like a new technique, or a new area, which is something I appreciate in video games. While some of the games aren't the best experiences for a first time playthrough, the reward for getting better in multiple playthroughs is something I truly love about this series. I know I can always come back to this series when I can play in salt bursts and have fun. Recently, Sonic fans have been treated well with the games, the films, and the new Netflix, so this headshot won't slow down for a long while. Whether you are a 2D platformer fan like me, someone who loves 3D titles, or even someone who just reads the comics, Sonic the Hedgehog has something for a lot of folks, and this is why I appreciate him. Before the end of the video, I would like to ask the question, what got you into the Sonic series, and what do you like about the character? I would love to hear your comments. I hope you have a wonderful day.